All right, so the first step in uh, opening up an evergreen miner, you have to take off these rubber feet. So, like I said, I have done this before. I actually had one of my hard drives have a little electrical fire. Um, so that was interesting. Maybe I'll get into that at the end of this video. Um, so under these feet, you can see there's like a screw. So that's how you get into these. All of them, you get in the same way. Obviously, it's just the inside that's different, uh, with some being hard drives and this one being a Raspberry Pi. So we're going to continue taking all these off here and open her up and see what's going on in here, hopefully. Actually gonna try and wonder if I can, I think I can put this up on my shelf here and give you all an aerial view as I work, maybe. There we go, that's a good spot. We'll, uh, we'll leave the phone there and get to work on this. So I need to grab a Phillips head screwdriver. I'll grab that. Actually, all right, so it's not even the screwdriver that's from. You can kind of see, hopefully if this clears up, there's a little film here. So I guess when I took off this one foot, it actually didn't pull up the adhesive film. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. So that probably won't re-stick really once we get this off here. So I'm going to get off this film and then hopefully I can actually unscrew this for you guys. Alright, so I got the film off, the two that had the film stuck in it. I do have a smaller screwdriver, which should be able to get these done done. Yes, there we go. So we're going to take out these four. Now we got a good look on what's going on inside here. They are pretty long screws, just when you do, um, if you do ever have to open one of these, they are very long. Um, so you will have to screw longer than you think. Um, and obviously when you're putting them back, do not over screw because it is just plastic. Uh, these are 3D printed shelves from what I can tell. Um, so if you do keep screwing, you will, you know, destroy the plastic threads in the shell. Um, so just something to keep in mind if you have opened them. Like I said, I have opened one of these before because one of them had a small electrical fire in it. Uh, it short circuited. Um, and maybe I'll open that one for you guys. Kind of show you guys. Maybe, maybe I'll make it like a separate video on that. Um, just to show you, I have the damage, I kept the damaged uh, board because there's a board that connects to the hard drive in each of these units. Um, so I did keep the damage board, um, thinking I'd show you guys at some point. Kind of fell by the wayside. Um, it happened way back in like, uh, when did I get this? Like February, January? I don't even remember anymore, to be honest. Uh, quite, a ten, quite a while ago though. Uh, all right, so we got this four screws out. We're gonna pop this off. There we go. You can see, um, I don't know if I call it paint or whatnot, but essentially there's this white um, underneath and then it's like the final layer of filament they use is green on the 3D printer maybe. Um, or maybe it's just spray painted. I don't really know. I'm thinking it's spray painted to be honest, the more I look at this. And there must have just been tape there. Um, so yeah, we got this open. This is what the inside looks like. So it looks like we have our, so this is where your DC in connects. This is kind of a, a voltage regulator. So it outputs at five volts, three amps, 15 watts, um, instead of the incoming. Um, this is that little LED light. Looks like it has this giant cable that connects to our Raspberry Pi here. Honestly, everything in here looks Okay, right now I don't see anything burnt. I don't see anything out of place. Um, US, our uh, SD card seems to be seated well. Uh, this plug was in all the way. I mean, I'll replug it here. Um, but yeah, it was definitely in all the way. So I'm not really, not really sure what's going on here with this unit yet. I think we're gonna have to 
unscrew some more and see if we can see if we can find something that looks wrong I guess is really what we're looking for and right now nothing here really looks wrong so let's uh see we got two screws here on this voltage regulator and then we got four screws on the actual Raspberry Pi so uh, get unscrewing those here for you guys I guess we'll do, hmm. I, d I doubt there's anything wrong with this, so we'll just undo this one first so just to get it out of the way. You guys can all see my sexy legs in this, so that's cool. Yeah. All right, so we do got our voltage regulator unscrewed. No burning, nothing looking out of place on there. We're gonna disconnect it from our board, um, just cause we are about to take off this board. And yeah, we'll see what happens when we open this, or not open this, when we take out these the Raspberry Pi screws, we'll see if we can uh, find something that looks out of place or something but right now I'm just not seeing anything it's not really making much sense why we're not able to boot with any hard drives connected and find it kind of funny that there's four cables that go to that tiny little LED there's uh, you know the white red black and yellow well, for that one little LED, which isn't a push button or anything, it's just a status. So it's kind of funny how much that one LED takes just to operate. But almost got the Raspberry Pi off here. Um, I think, I wonder if it says what it is. Are you like a Pi Orange or what? We don't know. I don't know enough about Raspberry Pis to be honest, but. We do have it disconnected, so we are going to. Oh, so you can kind of see here that it has a four pin connector to that light. So we're going to undo that four pin connector real quick. Hopefully. There we go. And now we should be able to take out our little Raspberry Pi. So this is our Raspberry Pi here. Uh, it's a little 10 millimeter fan. This actually reminds me and it looks exactly like the black fans that are on the KS0 now so from Ice River so that's kind of funny um, yeah I'm just not seeing anything so it is um, so there, there are not screws in this fan um, it is just double-sided taped to the heatsink um, probably to save some space so you can kind of see some of this tape showing um, but it doesn't like block the flow it's just in the corners of the tape um, so that seems fine our fan headers are plugged in and fully seated I mean everything's looking normal on here I just I just don't see any any problematic items the USB ports like don't look like they're damaged or anything like that just really like maybe it just had died or something I really don't know um, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and uh, boot this up kind of I'm gonna pull out this SD card we're gonna reseat this just in case that's maybe the issue even though I'm pretty sure it was fine um, Just not seeing anything so I'm going to plug this in without closing up the unit I just kind of want to see if I can see anything while it's actually operating uh, maybe there's something I'm just not able to see at this time so we're gonna plug in our Ethernet there uh, we do still have to do this the good old way with uh, our splitter here. I'm actually, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna use the splitter. I'm just gonna plug directly um, and avoid the splitter since I'm not using the hard drives right now. 
uh, and see what happens. So you can see that the red light's on, the green light blinked for a brief moment there. It keeps blinking a little bit. Um, we'll give it a couple moments, see if it does actually, you know, do something here for us. I'm gonna bring up the app on my other device. Now, in theory, this should just work. Oh, the only thing I've actually changed since when uh, we were get able to get it to boot without the hard drives is I unplugged the light. And the LED light, status light, should have no effect on anything. So it should actually eventually uh, load in here and I should be able to see it in the app. Uh, it still never used to take this long. Um, really kind of weird that it takes so long but it has finally shown up so you can see that we do have our OS manager and device manager operating we have no farmer because we have no um, whatever it's called I'm having a mind blank we have no hard drives connected yeah so I think I'm gonna try adding a hard drive with it open like this and see if we get the same result it probably will so i'm not really counting on doing anything different um, but we'll find out or heal real quickly so to do that i'm just gonna plug in one of our usb cables over here we'll uh, bring over the stack of hard drives a little closer at least um, it doesn't really matter what one I tried, they were all apparently not working. So, we'll uh, throw that one in there. We'll add our little splitter. Because we will need this now. This is going to start looking a little janky compared to when it's all buttoned up and closed. But, that's what we got to do for science. We're going to figure this out. So, we're going to plug this in. See if we get the same... Things. Yeah, we got the red light, we got green flashing light occasionally. Part of me wants to connect that light just to see if, <laughs> see if the status light is still doing what it used to be doing. Not really sure. But we'll give this a moment here and see if it shows up in the app. Alright, so I have confirmed it actually did fully boot this time, even with uh, the hard drive attached. It's not farming uh, for whatever reason, but I can actually get into this screen now with a hard drive. Uh, so when the hard drive wasn't loading, um, I couldn't even, you know, I couldn't get to running services or anything like that. Um, this screen just would not show up. So I can see, you know, the OS manager it seems to be working. Um, device manager, it's not showing any drives, farmer, um, I get this error down here, so this is actually when it went offline, you can see that it says 812, so this thing hasn't been mining for a while, I just, now I'm getting around to like troubleshooting it, a couple weeks later, um, it just says failed to initialize worker, I, I really don't know what that means, like my pool's all set up, I just really don't really don't know what's going on here I mean maybe we'll press submit again and see what happens error setting payout address well that's not good so now I'm real confused I really have no idea like what the issue is here again no drives are registering farmer's still offline Running service uh, pool configuration. There we go. Pool configuration worked this time. That's weird. I'm just gonna delete the payout address. We're just gonna start over. So I just copied this over. Make sure you don't have a space at the end. Nothing crazy like that. We're gonna press submit. That's weird. This time it worked. I am. I'm just as confused as you guys. I don't know. <laughs> no idea what's going on. All right, so it looks like our pool did, configuration did set that time. Um, I don't know what that means. 
for our device in general. Uh, well, now everything's offline, so that's exciting. Sorry for the long video, guys. This is just, uh, this is honestly, my life is this one ever comes to troubleshooting things, I feel like. So, this is how I spend my evenings. This is how I spend my evenings. See, and then I go to this screen, and it says farming needs setup. But it shouldn't. And I haven't changed anything, so I, I really, honestly, have no idea what's going on. Still trying, still trying. It says it's online now, so that's cool. Still no drives. Still no farmer. Health failed. Needs. It still says needs config. Uh, it failed to initialize worker. So we're, that's clearly clearly something's wrong. Um, I just don't know what. <laughs> plug in drive to begin formatting. No drive detected. Make sure they are plugged in. They are detect. They are plugged in. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So this is different. I've never seen this action here. So um, this is new. So hmm. I guess we'll, maybe we'll try plugging in a different one and see what happens. So let's turn her off. There we go. And we'll just like, I don't know, try this bottom one, why not? Doesn't really matter. We're not really getting anywhere. So, you know what, and I think I'm going to re-plug in this little status light because at least it gives me some idea of what, where I'm, where I'm at when we're waiting. Uh, instead of just waiting endlessly. I have some idea what's going on. So, there we go. Uh, for science, try a different hard drive. Since we seem to have gotten farther in the app. At least it's register. It was registering with a hard drive, but it wasn't, and booting up, but it wasn't actually like saying the hard drive existed. Um, so I'll give it a couple minutes. See what happens here. This new hard drive. All right. So it seems to have loaded up again. It is saying, you know, things are. Here, but again, we're getting no drives, just zero drives. Um, if I do go back to the home menu, it does say to connect your drives, but then it says nothing's detected. So something's clearly wrong with this Raspberry Pi. I don't really know what, by any means, um, or maybe the maybe something's wrong or corrupted with the OS they utilize. I really don't know. I think I'm about done with things to try today. I'm just kind of at a, I'm just kind of stuck um, at the moment. So <laughs> I guess this is the first step. I think I'm going to reach out to. So I reached out to them in the past, and they were really great with customer service. Um, when I had an electrical um, issue with one of these. Um, like I said, there was a short circuit, so smelled some smoke, and you know, there's burn marks on the inside of one of these, um, and had to replace the board that connects to the hard drive. They were really great about it and sent me stuff, so I'm hoping I'll reach out to Evergreen and they can, you know, give me some other ideas of things to try or um, help me out in some way. But yeah, I, you guys, you know, I really don't know what else to try here. Nothing seems to be working. Um, I've tried every hard drive. So, you know, comment down below if you have anything that, if you've had a similar issue, and if you have, you know, was there something that solved or rectified the issue? And even if you haven't had this issue, like, you know, comment down below if there's an idea you think I should try. 
Uh, but it's probably going to take some back and forth in a few days uh, with Evergreen before I can move forward on this project of getting this back up and operating. So uh, definitely be a follow-up video. So like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll be back once I hear from Evergreen Miner on what to do next on this. But for now, I think I'm going to call it a day. Until next time.